Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Jax in the top lane after his changes. For those of you who aren't aware what happened, they removed the AP scaling on his Q, which was at 60%, and instead they gave his E 100% AP scaling. And they also buff his R, making it an AOE damage tool, auto attack reset, and on top of that, when you activate it, every second auto is empowered instead of every third passively. So he's quite a bit better, and you think, well, why not play him AP? AP Jax top lane has really bad win rates. If you want to play AP Jax, you need to play him in the jungle. That's where it works best, and I already made a video on that. This is for Jax top lane after the changes with the best build in runes possible. We have the D-Blade start for aggression with Ignite aggression, Flash aggression, E start, of course, with Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Biscuits, Magical Footwear, Attack Speed 80, and Armor. For our build, we have to go for Divine Sunderer, then Bork, then Shoujun for the highest win rate possible at 67%. Very nice. Jack's all-ins rely on him building up attack speed on passive and then walking his opponents down. This Kel's playing up way too far. I can already tell you she's going to die. She's, she's being crazy. Just how close she's standing. I have all my attack speed built up. She's getting devastated there. I'm zoning her off the minions as well. Even though I'm missing CS, she's missing more than I'm missing when I do that. I have attack speed built up. I can walk her down. She's going to go in for the last hits here. Oh, she actually started Q. That's kind of interesting. Auto attack E. Auto attack. Another good trade. We can dive her here. I need to dump it without her really getting any CS. And then I'll walk her down. Use my potion. I have attacks we built up. Auto attack. Auto attack. Then we'll flash out. If we didn't flash, we might end up dying. Auto attack W reset with Triumph. Maybe we live there. So the, the reason we were able to kill her is we had passive full stack for attack speed. And on top of that, we didn't waste our dash. We just walked at her, stayed calm, activated E once we were in range. She then panic flashed away. Then we use our Q when we can no longer reach her with our stun or our auto attacks. And since we had minion advantage, if she hits us, she's soaking their aggro. Three range creeps is an 80 carry auto attack in terms of damage output. She was going to get absolutely rolled there. What she had to do from that position was just reset she could not stay she was going to die she's in a really bad spot now first item back typically you want to go for sheen if you're going to play Jax with tp you're typically doing that in a matchup where you absolutely do not feel confident for example having to play Jax into shen pantheon pantheon's level one outranges Jax. so basically champions that constantly outrange you level one teleports an okay option Dorn Shield is an okay option. Champions who don't consistently outrange you level 1 with huge amounts of damage and poke, then the D-Blade Ignite is much, much better. But yeah, defensively, Teleport D-Shield is fine on Jax. Let's build up some attack speed and jumper. That would be nice. This is a big wave. I'll try to slow it down. Stepping in and out, trying to cancel autos and movement. I have passive pretty much full stacked here. Generally want to max your W first on Jax. The auto attack reset aspect helps you get your passive faster. He needs to just keep running. He's going to soak a lot of my XP here just by being by my minions. I need to thin this out. Yeah, he's helping himself to some gold as well. <laughs> what a troll. I don't even know why he came top because we're winning it pretty hard and we have it in a freeze. So it's not really that helpful. To hold a freeze, you need them to have four or more range creeps than you. I might have thinned out too many here. Because my wave reinforce first. She's going to die for this cannon. Auto attack. Walk her down. Auto attack W reset. She's not going to die per se, but... Well. Auto attack. Ooh, and down she goes. We'll hit biscuit since we're below half health, half mana. And yeah, we're fine. We're out of there. Oh, wait, Shaco's almost dead. I can't stay for this. Uh, she's actually just going to, I guess, die for this. Wait, so she goes for Shaco instead. I got my Eon. I'm going to stun early so she doesn't jump out. Ward the bush. And what she did wasn't worth it because she just gave me red buff. I'm going to go kill Kel, literally. Kel doesn't have items to get anything impressive. So even though I'm sitting on 1300 gold and I'm almost dead... 
She doesn't have enough damage output to actually kill us because our E is going to be blocking her auto attacks, which is her main source of damage. She's going to be in a really bad spot here. She just doesn't realize it. I'll attack door reset into E. I blocked everything. Ignite. Finish her off. Yeah, she's in a bad spot, man. I'm going to go ahead and push this down. Plus, red buff gives you true damage and is slow on all your autos. So it's on hit and burn damage, plus a slow. Plus, it heals you a lot when you're out of combat with champions and turrets. I'll attack double reset. We'll use E to shove. You never use your E to shove if the enemy champion's there, because that's your main trade tool and main all-in tool. I'm only doing it since she's dead and we're trying to dump this as fast as possible. I'm going to go ahead and reset because I don't know where Elise is. She could potentially be coming this way. I'm super low health, no mana, sitting on a bunch of gold. Otherwise, yeah, staying for the plate would be great. I think we're going to miss out on that plate altogether because we have so many minions. Let's go ahead and get call fields. We'll pick up Kinlan Gem, Control Ward, head back to lane. If you have a big, juicy, girthy lead, or just honestly in general on Jax, typically holding on to your ward is the better option because you can jump away with Q. If you have the wave shoved, then lane Control Ward's fine because you can defensively hold it. But if you're going to freeze it towards your turret, having a control ward laid over here is useless because they're going to break it for free. If you run past the minions at that point when you're freezing, they'll crash on your turret. You still have a biscuit. Use it when you're below half health, half mana. It gives you more health, more mana the more you're missing. Still have the red buff. I could look for an all-in on her here. She has way more minions than me and her wave reinforces first. Go ahead and thin it out just a little bit. When you thin, you're usually looking to get it down to them having four more healthy range creeps in you. If they're super low, maybe keep it at five or six. The cannon minion oftentimes ruins the ratio because it attacks so fast. So if it like randomly starts attacking backline minions, it, will, it rips them down so quick. Really messes things up. We have the attack speed built up, our empowered auto ready off of R. She's going to step up for this. We're going to stun early. Auto attack W reset. She loses pretty much all of her health there. We're not going to use our R because we know we can't kill her. And our R is a long cooldown. You don't willy nilly throw it out. You only do it when you need the damage to kill them with it. Or if you're trying to get the extra armor magic resist and damage from second empowered auto instead of third empowered auto. In that situation, we, we needed three or four more auto attacks to kill her there. Because my abilities were on cooldown. We couldn't apply Sheen. Plus, she was going to have her own arm was under turret and we have a freeze. So we're applying consistent pressure just by staying alive, keep, keeping HP live, and uh, thinning the wave. This is a much more consistent form of pressure to where we don't have to trade sums with her and, and die for no reason. So she has five more range creeps. This is pretty good, especially on cannon wave. Them having five more is pretty perfect. Because our wave gets here first, cannon starts shredding the uh, range creeps and whatnot. Most of her range creep advantage has dissipated, <clears throat> but my melees have fallen apart. I'm use my Q point blank range as an auto reset. Your Q and your W are both realistically auto attack resets. She misses cannon. Big sad for her. Go ahead and lay that word there. I didn't lay the control word because I don't want her to break it as I freeze this. I'm trying not to take her minions right now because the wave's in the make it break it part. Got it. Go in the bush. Miss that minion. It's still in a make it or break it phase, just where it's at. I need to let my ranged minions die here a little bit. I'm actually missing way too much CS. This isn't a true freeze anymore, but she might think it is. It's just because my wave's reinforcing first and I didn't keep her at four or more ranged creeps. But if she AoEs the wave like that, it is a true freeze because she's using such max range. Elise is going in for an invade against my jungler. I can't really get there in time. Shaco can escape if he so chooses to here. I don't need his gank at all. She's not stepping up close enough for me to hit her with Q, so all I could try to do is zone her off of XP. But in return, if I'm missing minions, it's not necessarily worth it because she's already level 6 and up. She already has all of her abilities. What does Elise have? She doesn't have anything too big. I might be able to... I actually don't think I can 1v2 them. Kel's going to use her R. It's going to stall things out. 
If I have the wave fighting with me, then maybe. Got the empowered auto, bada boom. Kel's not stepping up for it though. I'd love to jump on her with empowered auto. Q auto, double reset, whip her with the E. She hits me, then I'll start using my E here. Couldn't quite get her. I was ready to jump out on the minions, but she, look how much damage she's taking though. Cause I let her hit me first and then I used my E. Cause if she didn't hit me first, then Go and flash away and I die. I get both their flashes though. I also get the Kel Ignite. Luckily the shutdown gold goes to the Elise. I was definitely playing a bit too far up. This is a Merc Treads type of game. Double AP is what I'm playing against. AP Kel top plus AP Elise. Varus has a lot of magic damage on his abilities and Kench has some as well. So looking like Merc Treads. If they have a lot of mixed damage, You'd be better off with Ionian boots because then you're not having to commit to either magic resist or armor while simultaneously you're getting very high value out of incredibly inexpensive tier 2 boots. We go for Bork next. The life still on it helps you to permafreeze. I should have jumped away on a ward or something. I needed to keep a ward on me and get ready to jump. Trying to turn to fight that without having a complete item advantage over them was a bit of a goofball move. Now she gets plate gold. I'm forced to push this really fast now. Like really, really fast. She's gonna reset and I'm gonna counter what she just did. All right, she didn't even reset. That's shocking she didn't reset. I'm gonna kill her in between her turrets, so I'll leave that right there for her. I'll attack double reset. She should not have gone back into human form. She's going to die now. I'll attack W reset. I went, went ahead in R just for fun. I wanted to see that damage hit her. I have red buff now. Kel's dead, man. She can't stay there with no R. She doesn't have flash ignite either. I'll build up some attack speed and jump on her head. Walk her down underneath turret so I can hold on to my dash. I have six built up on passive. Use biscuit. Auto attack W. Down she goes. She's very greedy thinking the turret can save her from us. Just walk at her. Got the cannon. Very nice. Now what we want to do is kill her in between turrets. She staggered heavily from the Elise. She doesn't have TP either. TP is a good way to beat what I'm doing here. TP would have served her a lot better, but she's being greedy and ran Ignite. Thinking she was going to solo kill us. So now I can stand in between the turrets. And there's nothing she can really do. You don't have to make it super obvious like I am. I wasn't even trying to steal that from him. I was just trying to help him take it faster. I'll attack W reset. There goes half her health. If she can't get back to her wave now, she needs the Elise, and I'm kind of strong enough to fight them both at once if I play it right. As long as I dodge her stun. Or at least get my E down when she stuns me so she can't burst me. Neither can Kel. She goes trying to make something happen there. She's missing so many minions, though. I'm fine with leaving this turret up for a while. The amount of CS she's missing is astonishing. It's also astonishing that my jungler just inted. Because I don't need him topside at all. <laughs> oh well. I'll make her think I'm leaving, but I'm not. At least just took dragon, so I know she's not over here. I'll let it crash a little bit. Alright, we get the gold. I want her to miss cannon minion. Nice. This might actually end up pushing to me, even though because she has one more minion. I'll hide here. The ward can't see us if, as long as we're not crossed a certain part. Lisa's is dead as well. She has one more range creep, as long as my minions don't focus that down. I could potentially go take a red buff if that is up. That would be the move here. And then reset for Bork. She's still dead for a while as well. Yeah, this is the obvious play. 
I'll hold on to my word as escape tool. She's not going to be here in time. Yeah, the wave's pushing to me, I think. Cannon. It should on the next wave. Could potentially kill the cannon. She's kind of tanky, though. Yasuo. Oh, I should have just gone mid there, I think. I didn't have enough gold for Forex, so I'll sell the D-Blade. I hate having to sell D-Blade. It is what it is. I'll go catch this wave. She won't be able to push it fast enough because she's not level 11. She's also not a full item, and I'm too full item. She's been playing insanely safe, trying not to die, and just waiting for ganks. It can work out kind of playing that way if your team's going to hard carry you, but her team's not hard winning at all. At this point, we'd want to shove up and start taking their jungle camps like a Trindamir would do. Jax generally isn't much of a team fighter. He's more so a team fighter with his R changes, because the more people you hit with your R, more enemy champions you hit, the more armor and magic resist it gives you. But if you don't hit a huge R in a team fight, it's actually just really squishy and easy to kill. I'll attack W reset. Kind of wasted my E, whatever. Am I going to find the Kel? Okay, she got away. She got really far away. She is tier 2 boots, has the self speed up. Not sure what she warded. She's moving 380. I'm moving 405. She doesn't seem to be reacting. Oh, I have her on the flank. She's got to run the other way. Yep, she realized. She actually cannot run me. I'll attack W reset. She's dead. Red buff burn. I have a level 12 red buff burn against her level 9. HP pool. That's not going to be a pretty exchange. I can stop her from going back to her turret again as long as they don't send more than two people for me. I'll attack W reset. Hey, Elise. Let me get some attack speed here. Alright, I'll jump out. I can fight her. Oh, never mind. Varus is here. I'll attack W reset. Get off the stun and the R ignite. That really hurts. I did not enjoy that at all. He's shredding, bro. It's that lethal tempo. It's full stack. Doing some wild damage. The Bork self healing is so freaking low. <laughs> I got 30 health from that. I'll W spam this. That should be enough with the auto resets. Actually, I need to hold on to my uh, mana so I can jump away to a ward if I need to. I could block its autos with my E, but once again, I need to save my jump so I don't give them shutdown. Ah, uh, she stole it from me, that little butthole. It is time for Shoujin. Shoujin gives a crazy amount of ability haste. If you rush it first item, it gives you 40 ability haste total outrageous if you get it later on in the game it's not so let me put it this way if you get it to where you already have 80 at that point it would be giving you somewhere around 50 to 60 total which is a lot and we get to jump spam w spam e spam you don't take any damage from auto attacks or auto abilities with your e it also makes you take reduced damage from area of effect abilities like Cassiopeia Q, Cass R, Annie Tibbers, Annie W. Any ability that does AoE damage. I know Varus wants to try to tickle my pickle. I can walk him down. Perf would rather have some attack speed up first. I timed it with my Herald. Timed it, got my attack speed up, jumped on it, Ryze Herald was kind of in midair. Walk it out. Oh, just barely, dude. I'm out of there later, my dudes. Varus was looking to tickle me again with his Q. I'm not interested. Sorry, Varus. Auto attack over, set E. Jack's giving me it, or Zach giving me a leash because he's support. Is this worded or something? I think Varus is going for minions. I think he's being greedy. Oh, wait. Why did I do that? I'll attack W reset. Got it. 
I don't think I quite got in my auto. My auto kind of got canceled because he went out of my range. That was a really bad ward lay on my part. I'll attack Darius at E. I'll attack Q. Or I should say auto attack W reset there. Got whipped super hard. I had lethal tempo stacked and my passive stack. Plus with the Bork, I was shredding him super, super fast. He was not well equipped to fight us there. I could kill her if she rounded the corner and I had E, but I don't have enough mana for the E, so... I at least need E to fight her to stop her from shredding me when I'm this low on health. Let's get our passive built up. Still have enough to use my E here. 90 mana, boy oh boy, it gets expensive. I guess I could stay actually, but I'm super low. After Shoujun, it's usually Death Dance is the move. I think they just nerfed it though. Or I think they're planning on nerfing it is what's going on. I don't think it's been nerfed yet is what it is. Drag Soul is definitely the win con. I could sit on the split and be able to solo Kel indefinitely since she's auto based and I can block with E. I'll group when Dragon's up. Otherwise, I'll sit on the split. Shaco's dead. He's not really farming anyways. AP Shaco isn't much of a farmer. With that being said, AP Shaco should have a Dark Sill Mesh. It's not viable without those items. I'll be going top here in a second. W doesn't cost really any mana. 30 compared to 65, 90, and R is only 50 for some reason. Why does Jack's E cost more than his R when his R does five different things? Boop. They're playing super heavy there. Radiant Virtue giving Zai a bit of a heal. Kel one full item. Kench one full. These guys are in trouble. I eat early. No. He's fast. He has those fast boots, man. Because Jax actually has really good base movement speed at 350. Not many champions are faster than that. Definitely eat too early there. Need to check his movement speed first. Make sure I was actually gaining on him efficiently. I'll attack W reset. Boom. That's game. That's GG's, man. Jax is cracked. I could definitely see TF Blade getting rank 1 again on NA. As long as he doesn't get win traded against too hard. Jax is absolutely not balanced right now. Very fun champion. Very cool. So get damage dealt, damage taken. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we had the most in the game. Looking at damage taken, middle of the pack for runes, ultra high value. If you guys enjoyed this Jax gameplay, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.